Okay, welcome one and all. I think this is gonna be a wonderful session. Um, I wanna thank everybody for participating. I wanna thank Scott for leading it off. Uh, and then what we're gonna do, it is, it is advertised as a round table, meaning that, you know, if Scott's gonna make his, his presentation, but then we're asking you, the participants, to tell us what you're doing. Tell us what your club is doing and maybe what you, maybe you haven't even done it yet, but maybe you have an idea you'd like to float out there as a trial balloon. Great, whatever it is, whatever thoughts you have, I will say that we do have a pretty good, you know, decent uh, amount of participants. So I will ask you, you know, for the others to keep your remarks as succinct as possible, uh, maybe, maybe about a minute or so, because, you know, we do have a lot of people and I'm sure they all would like to say something. So we want to give everybody a chance. Okay, Scott, uh, I, I, I have to admit, I'm not prepared for an introduction. I apologize. I know you were a club president. Scott run, wrote a wonderful article uh, in the, the uh, FJMC publication describing what his club was doing towards the, toward the, during the pandemic. It was really great. And I was very impressed by that. I called up Scott. I said, Scott, would you like to make a presentation out of your article? And uh, he said he agreed to it. It was very, he was very uh, gracious in that regard. And uh, I want to welcome him and everybody else to the session. Scott, please take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everybody. I, I want to start off with a disclaimer. I'm an academic surgeon and I give lots of talks all around the world and I don't open my mouth without a PowerPoint slide behind what I'm going to say. So for me, this is really a lot of fun because I have no slides to show. It's just going to be off the cuff and very informal. As Elliot would tell you, we have a very active and lively group at Temple Israel in Sharon, Massachusetts. And our brotherhood is a relatively large brotherhood as well. I think we have about 180 members, something like that. Of course, not everybody's active, but we do have a large number of people that are quite active, including Elliot. Uh, when the, uh, prior to the pandemic, we would typically have a monthly board of directors meeting, which usually was a bagel breakfast at the shul at around 10 in the morning till close to noon, depending if there was football that day or not. In addition, we had a number of events such as uh, getting sports figures, particularly reporters and uh, uh, people in the media who uh, talk about sports to come give us lectures. We've had movies. We've, we have other events, uh, the paid up supper and the brotherhood weekend where we would run the, most of the services for the shul for the weekend, uh, man of the year awards. So we were pretty busy. And when the pandemic hit, it basically, as it had for all of you, shut everything down. Obviously we couldn't have anything with food. The synagogue was locked up and uh, life as we knew it completely changed. Well, uh, the convention hit, and uh, if you recall that Saturday night, there was a Havdalah service that was uh, 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 Zoomed to anybody who wanted to watch it, followed by a uh, comedian. And that was all part of the convention that we would have experienced had we been able to go. Well, we as a group- Actually, decided... Scott, that was, that's a New England retreat, so everybody knows okay. that. Okay, sorry, a retreat. A uh, long story short, we decided that just watching it all on Zoom wasn't really going to be enough. So what we did was about 10 of us assembled in my backyard at night. We stayed socially distanced from one another. And we had a, our own Havdalah service in conjunction with the retreat. And then we stayed and we watched the, uh, the comedy aspect of it. We hung a big white sheet in the backyard as a, uh, a screen. And we brought a projector in. And we were able to, through the internet, stream the comedy hour. So that sort of gave us this sense that we could do anything we set our hearts to do. And one of the major things that people complained about was the lack of personal contact with Zoom. Yeah, we're seeing one another, yeah, we're communicating, but it's not the same as being out there with somebody six feet away even. So we started to see, we were having our board meetings every month by Zoom and we said, well, why can't we do the same thing we did with the Havdalah service and take it outside? So we uh, told everybody, go buy your own breakfast, get your own bagel and cup of coffee and meet in the parking lot at a place right across the street from the shul. The shul at the point did not give us permission to use their parking lot. 
And let's see if I could share my screen with you. Uh, we got together enough board members to have a board meeting and we've now done this pretty much uh, for the past few months. So if you look at the picture, we're separated by greater than six feet. A lot of the guys are sipping coffee and we had our board meeting and we've done this now a few times. We've got a couple coming up, but we're taking it to the next level with Elliot's suggestion and help. We're looking at doing a drive-in movie night. We now have permission to use the parking lot at the shul so we can actually plug into power. And we're working out the finer details of how to have a movie night where we can once again come, park the cars, separate ourselves safely from one another, wear our masks, bring our own food, and have a, have a nice night. Uh, we're also planning, we're going to see if we could pull this off, to buy everybody's bagels, say uh, Dunkin' Donuts, where the bagels are individually wrapped, and bring them with us to the meeting that we're going to have actually on Sunday as opposed to telling people, bring your own. So uh, what else do we have? We, we've uh, had a Zoom meeting with Jared Firestone. He's a, a young, actually American Jew who is compete, he, we, uh, practicing to qualify to uh, be on the Israeli, uh, what event is that? It's, it's a downhill, uh, like a, a bobsled event. He would represent Israel. So we actually, by Zoom, had an hour and a half with him asking him questions and uh, talking about what it's like to train, what it's like to, uh, to represent Israel in the Winter Olympics. So in a nutshell, we have basically have been able to do almost anything we thought we wanted to do with just the limitations of being separate from one another, wearing our masks and uh, and I guess it's really that's most of what I wanna say. We've had a few other minor events. Uh, and they've all gone uh, very successfully. I don't know if you want to add anything, Elliot, please do. Well, the uh, first off, it's a good kudos to Scott and our uh, executive vice president for being open for this stuff because, you know, we all believe that we need to do some, A, we, let, we enjoy each other's company, and I bet you all your clubs, it's a similar thing. And if needed be, we, we needed a manufacturing opportunity so we could ha hang out and be together. So um, that by itself is enough of a reason. But it was, it was good that Scott was willing, as a doctor actually, as a physician, to be able to say, hey, we can do this safely, and we can, we can have a good time. And his mindset was very critical to doing this, and I'm, I'm pretty sure all your clubs could do this. Our guys want to get together in, in an analytical sort of way. You know, our not getting together as a group of guys is, is a real problem. I think with the clubs lose uh, inertia, momentum, and um, the clubs have inertia, and, and we lose our momentum. And it's more critical than ever, I think, for guys to connect. So... Any way your clubs can do this, I, we would definitely recommend. Yeah, if I can add, we just had a leadership strategy session, which we hold once a year. We were holding it in a hotel, a Holiday Inn, in a conference room, and would usually have like a dinner or a lunch meal, and it would last about four hours, and we would more or less plan out the events for the upcoming year. We had it in my backyard again. There were six of us. We separated. We were able to bring in sandwiches and uh, drinks. And we have now a roadmap for what we want to do for the upcoming year. That's wonderful stuff, guys. Let's uh, throw it out for conversation. Who else has ideas? What else have your clubs been doing or what else are you considering doing? Uh, this is Kevin, I'm from St. Louis. Uh, Scott is uh, one of my uh, vice presidents is on this call as well. We have a, a meeting with our uh, club leadership on Thursday coming up actually. Uh, when this all was happening uh, and uh, the, you know, probably around April and May, our synagogue was planning the next year. They told us to plan our year as if this was going to be all okay. They wanted us to be prepared as if everything was going to be fine. It was all going to turn. Obviously that hasn't happened. So we're having to readjust. Um, and we're looking at like what kind of activities we can do. Um, I think the idea of doing the clubs uh, or the club meetings in a socially distant way 
is great. I think that would definitely help us. But are there any other things that are being done, uh, you know, socially distant, but not necessarily via Zoom, you know, all in the same space that folks are doing uh, that, uh, does anybody ha have any programs that they're running that way? There's one other program toward the shuls, which is a bike ride uh, between the different synagogues in Massachusetts and there's different lengths of a ride and you get sponsorship and it was a charity event and that got canceled, but we're probably going to do it instead of us all riding together, we're all going to ride on our own and then record our mileage and try to do the best we can with the uh, cards that we were dealt. Scott, it actually wasn't canceled. We had it. it oh, was I'm here. sorry. Uh, it was, instead of having it on a single day in, in the end of June, we had the ride over the entire month of June. Uh, we didn't have as many riders as we'd like, but we still were able to give a, a sizable donation to Camp Ramah in Palmer, Massachusetts for their TICFA program. We're hoping for better luck next year, but... Uh, it was, I think it was successful in light of everything going on. And again, it was all social distancing and uh, people were excited to be involved. That's great. Uh, Scott, if you don't mind, can you turn off your screen sharing so we can yes. see each other again? Thanks. I, I was hoping my club president would be on. He did, he did sign up. Uh, Ira, are you on? Maybe I didn't see him. No, don't think so. Okay. Uh, I'm from Temple Sinai, uh, which is a club in the suburbs of Philadelphia. And what we do, what we have done in a couple of times, we've had meetings where we had entertainment. Uh, there, we have a fellow who plays the guitar and, uh, you know, we sat in a huge circle and uh, we sang, you know, he played the guitar, we sang along, and it was a lot of fun. And we brought the libation of our choice. I can assure you it was not coffee. Uh, and we had a good time. <laughs> if I can add a couple of ideas that we've also kicked around, one is to have, we have a gentleman who works in the liquor industry, he's a vice president, and what he's going to do is he's going to mix drinks, and we're all going to get the same ingredients and mix the drinks in our own homes with him directing us. We right. uh, used to have a basically a scotch and sirloin evening once a year in January that we canceled, but we thought that that could be a substitute for it where we could come up and make these Cosmos, whatever crazy drinks that he wants to teach us. So that's something else you can do. Uh, really, the sky's the limit. Uh, in fact, if you guys want to do that, there are two cantors who are, who are active with FJMC. Uh, and of course, I, I'm an old guy. I forgot their names right off the top of my head, but if you- Zach Mondro. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, Elliot? Yeah, yeah Zach Mondro. Zach Mondro. And Joanne, Joanne, Joanne Adult. Zach Mondro. I don't know the other one, though. Joanne, Joanne Adult's husband. Oh. Joanne Adult's husband. Ah. I don't know his name. Okay. One is. Uh, is uh, Ro Ross? Is it Ross? Sorry? Joanna's husband is. Yeah, isn't Joanna's it Ross? husband. That's correct. Ross. Uh, I think that's. What's, last, what's Joanna's last name? Dolkin. Okay, so Canner Dolphin, a uh, rabbi, actually he's Rabbi Dolphin when I think about it. And also uh, Canner Josh, Josh, Jason. If anybody wants the name, write to me, I'll look, I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, guys. It's Ryan Dolkin. Okay. Thank you, Ryan Dolkin, that is it. Yeah. U-L-K-I-N. You can, you know, put his name in, uh, in Google, it'll come up, you can reach him easily. If you want the Canner's name, who also does uh, cocktail making, just write to me, uh, A-B-U-D-M-A-N at F-J-M-C dot org. Okay, I'm sure they'll be happy to help you. Something my club did, we wanted to, to give back in some way or another. So we um, approached our synagogue and our caring community to see whether there were people who were in need. Um, and there re really wasn't a whole lot of people, a few people. And then we t approached our Federation for some other uh, names, and then we used our local caterer, uh, accommodator, to create Friday night meals, and we delivered 20 meals on a Friday night to different people, uh, all social distancing, and we did that twice. So it was uh, it helped the caterer, it gave the men's club something important to do, and it helped the people who, who were receiving. So right. there's uh, just another activity of a way to be productive in this time.
and uh, I'm the uh, VP of communications. So any of these ideas you want to share. I mean, they're fabulous ideas. So um, if you write just a little blurb, a photo is great, send it to me, and uh, we'll put that in our Hashofar, which goes out to all of our club members, uh, about 6,000 emails. And um, then we all get to help each other. And then, of course, we have another publication called The Advantage, which is more uh, geared just towards leadership, not to everybody. And that can be more of a technical article about how you might plan an event. Okay, I just noticed that on the chat that uh, information was provided about the two people I spoke of, Ryan, uh, Ryan Dolkin and Zach Mondro. It's all there in that chat. Mm -hmm. uh, another idea we can do, your club can do, is to uh, help out people who need. So, for example, there might be people who are housebound and or, or perhaps afraid to go to the market. Uh, you can go to the market for them. You can organize some kind of shopping expedition where you can pick up stuff for people who can't get out or are afraid to go to the market. And I think that's a wonderful thing, particularly if you're shopping for yourself anyway, you just shop for somebody else at the same time. Um, one of the reasons our region is not well represented tonight is because we're competing with a, a caps game right now. Okay. So, uh, but uh, our, the rest of the guys in my club, uh, somebody invited, uh, set up a uh, a screen and a projector in his backyard and invited everybody to come over socially distance and bring their own snacks and watch the watch the hockey game and that was just people are doing these kind of things impromptu and uh and we've actually had more my club has actually had more activities in the summer than we normally would because you know nobody's traveling for a vacation so we had a well-attended trivia night we had a uh, uh, couple of other events next sunday night uh we're replacing the steak night with a bourbon tasting where the you have an excellent host who sent a list out in advance of the of the special bourbons that he's going to be uh be talking about and uh, I think other people are doing that kind of thing too but I'll be there <laughs> Alan, can I ask Bob a question Please do Bob, Bob yeah. when you when you say some of your club is watching the caps which is great are they they're watching them separately right no what I said is that uh, a guy set up a big screen in his backyard ah. with a with a projector and invited uh, everybody, our, right. extend, our extended board, especially about 20 guys to come over and watch in his backyard. That's a good thing. But you know, another ap approach, I think that's a great thing. And obviously, my club and Sharon, as Scott said that, but to do a Zoom thing like this, even while we're watching a, 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 a sports event could be interesting. Because you're going to have some guys who don't want to be out there. It happened in our club, you know? And this way everybody could share and have comments and stuff, you know, talk about Canadian hockey or whatever. <laughs> right, Rick? Yep. Let's <laughs> talk about the Maple Leafs. Can I jump in for a second, Alan? Please do. One of the things that our club has done is, is really changed its orientation. A lot of the activities that we used to do were very much get together activities. And what we have tried to do is help the synagogue. I'm in a really large synagogue, so there's not going to be any, any high holidays this year. We can't put 5,000 people in a building. There's no way to even imagine it. But what we have done is the, the, the synagogue's pretty good at reaching out to all the people that need help. What the men's club is trying to do is support that. We've got, for renewals, we're coming up for membership renewals. The, what we want to be part of, what we're trying to do is distribute to every person and every family in the synagogue, Maxarim for the high holidays, your site candles for, for Yitzchak, and so on. All of the supporting stuff that we need for the holidays. So it's not really that we're doing it as, you know, internally as our own thing. What we're trying to do is we basically use the resources we have from Yom Meshua candle distribution for something else. And because our Yom Meshua candles are all sitting in a cupboard at the shul with people's names on them. So none of that's happening, but we're trying to, uh, we, we also have a little bit of money. We're putting together a small video through the men's club on the synagogue, how to help out during the upcoming holidays. 
the region's also really just become a new region. It's a country now instead of an area. And we're trying to do a whole lot of marketing and reaching out to all of the, all of the, the, the rabbis and all of the, the people in the, and in the various synagogues across the country. That's something we have the time and the, and the energy to focus on. And we've got some good news. Rick's club, which was more abundant for a number of years has come back to, if you will, the fold and has, has got a new president. They're going to start, they're going to be active. It's, it's Ari, who many of you know. So there's a whole lot of exciting things, but what I'm finding is they're very different than what we used to do. And, and, and we're, we're contributing in different ways, but it's helping us to kind of feel like we're, we're, we're doing something important. Thank you, Don. Uh, you I, Barry had his hand up, Barry Balak. Yeah, thanks, Al. Um, yeah, Barry Balak from Ansham in Chicago. So uh, I'm not sure if you guys heard, but uh, we had actually an online retreat a few weeks ago uh, it ran from four o'clock Saturday afternoon through the following sun through the uh, next day Sunday, that included three regions together: um, Midwest, tri Midwest Tri Region. I, I, I uh, myself. I'm sorry, KIO and Tri State. And uh, there were 105 guys that signed up for that. The programs were outstanding. It was a wide variety, everything from uh, how to brew your own beer in the shul to uh, a lecture by a local cantor here in the Chicago suburbs on the Hebra Kadisha and uh, pretty much everything in between. Um, so, and you know, we had canceled our regular Midwest retreat and uh, some very- I remember that program, it was great. Yeah. Some very creative guys put uh, programming together for that. The other uh, program that we usually do every quarter is a program called Men, Meat, and Midrash with Milts. And uh, Milts is a kosher barbecue restaurant near our shul. So our shul just started to open up a few weeks ago by having 10 people uh, in the building. This Friday night is the first Friday night we're actually going to allow 40 people to come for Friday night service outdoors in the parking lot. But we thought uh, since the shul is starting to open up and come together, we could do our men meet and midrash in the parking lot, similar to uh, what was described for your men's club board, that we usually get about 25 people to come to that event. And uh, we can maintain social distancing in the parking lot. Uh, we always have one of the rabbis come and talk about whatever they feel like talking about. And uh, we can have Milts deliver the kosher barbecue to us. They're only three or four blocks away. And uh, Men's Club always throws in uh, an ample supply of beer. Because uh, God forbid we don't wash down the barbecue, right? So, um, so uh, that's coming up at the end of this month. Um, People here in Chicago have been timid about coming together. So we're hoping that we'll get a nice turnout for that. It's really hard to say. The other program that we're planning uh, for Sukkot, we have a huge stake in shots in the sukkah every year. Uh, last year, we had 90 people attend that event. We have an honoree uh, every year. So we were brainstorming last week at our men's club board meeting how we could still possibly hold that event. So the plan right now is to just have, we have a large sukkah, but uh, not large enough to have those numbers maintain social distancing. So our plan this year is to have our board members and their wives come. So that would give us uh, about 15 people in the sukkah we get the uh, main scotch rep from the Midwest to come to supply the scotch. And uh, she said she would be in. She, she says, you guys are great. We, she loves doing the event. Uh, she's still checking to see if she can get scotch, an ample supply of scotch samples, good scotch get samples in airplane bottles. And uh, the plan is for everybody else to Zoom to the event. And our plan is to deliver from a kosher caterer in the area 
not steak dinners because uh, the cost of that from the caterer would be expensive. We always prepare our own kosher steak barbecue. But uh, in the absence of that, our plan is to have the caterer deliver hopefully 90 chicken dinners with uh, an ample supply of uh, airplane bottles of scotch and they can zoom in and watch what's going on in Asuka. And we would have our honoree there oh. and uh, present our honoree with a nice award and uh, hopefully people will uh, be able to join in with us. Very good, thank you, Barry. Sure. Jay's next, Jay Steinmetz. Yes, thank you, Alan. Um, these, these are great programs, but uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the New York Metro Regional President. Um, I see some new faces here, so welcome to the uh, Zoom conference. It's nice to see some unfamiliar faces, and it's nice to see my friends from all over the country. Um, what we do in the New York, actually in my synagogue, in the East Meadow Jewish Center, um, we too are very timid to get back in the building, so we've done a lot of Zoom programs, of which I'm going to describe some of them. One of them, our, our club president is very into the entertainment industry, and he came up with a comedy night. But instead of a comedy night and having an entertainer entertain us on Zoom, he decided to say, uh, make it a joke night. So he basically brought it, uh, you know, send it out to the entire congregation, men's club and sisterhood. And we got together for about 45 minutes and we were just telling jokes. Um, when it first went out, I thought it was a men's club event. And I said, oh, I got a whole bunch of jokes I could tell. And then when I found out that the ladies would be involved, I said, okay, we got to change the topic. <laughs> but uh, to do a, a Zoom comedy night or a tell a joke night is very simple to do. And it's an entertaining, it's uh, very simple. And we had a lot of fun doing it. This past Monday, the Sisterhood um, came back and they did a trivia night where everybody participated. There were a bunch of trivia questions of all different subjects and topics. And everybody had a wonderful time trying to answer the questions. And that was just another topic of um, a program that anybody could do. And it's, it's easy to do with your clubs. Let me interrupt you for one second, Jay. I just want to say something. Uh, we did that at the MAR region. And if you use this program called Kahoot, K-A-H-O-O-T, it's very easy to do. Uh, it's, it really works very well. Sorry, continue, Jay. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Um, another program that we do, which is um, easy to socially distance, keeping with the FJMC and men's health, we do Friday mornings after Shacharit riding with the rabbi. We all take our bicycles, whoever wants to join us after Shacharit. We get on our bikes. We meet at the synagogue at around 730 in the morning, and we drive about six to seven miles into our local park and then back to the synagogue. So that is something that's very simple to do. It's giving you some exercise and you could socially distance with ease. Um, another thing, I know one of our member temples, Plainview Jewish Center, um, one of the members is, happens to be our third vice president of the region. He um, is involved with his men's club and he had a barbecue where they actually had a barbecue board meeting. I know somebody mentioned barbecues before where he volunteered his backyard. He cooked for uh, about 10 or 12 people. He has a large enough yard and they were able to separate socially and conduct business similar to what you guys did up in Sharon um, in the parking lot. But this time they actually, he actually cooked food and uh, supplied the beer and everything else and they had a great time with it. I try to attempt to do that this Thursday for my executive board meeting, but we didn't have 100% compliance with everybody. Some people were a little skeptical about going out and socializing, so we're gonna do a Zoom conference, but doing an outdoor barbecue and socially distance with a few people is easy to do. And the last thing I wanna mention, um, due to the pandemic, a lot of businesses were hurting, including the restaurants. They were the number one that was hurt. So what we do now in our synagogue, we've been doing this for the past eight or nine weeks, is don't cook tonight Wednesdays. Um, some of our members go to the local kosher restaurants in the neighborhood, ask if they would uh, be able to prepare food, um, people would actually call up, put in their orders. They would give us a discount. They would deliver all the meals to the synagogue. And then Friday, uh, Wednesday evening, early evening, around 530 in the afternoon, the people would go line up in their cars and go to the parking lot and pick up the food. So it's not only supporting the synagogue, because I think we get a little kickback, but we're supporting the local restaurants who are desperately uh, in need of business. So those are just a few ideas that are going on in my synagogue, in my region. But uh, the, the things that you guys had mentioned tonight are wonderful programs. I'm definitely going to uh, put it out to my region as well. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you Al, for putting this together. Thanks, Jay. Sure. Who's next? 
And there are other ideas. Got it. I'd just like to mention on a regional basis, I talked about our club, but I had our regional meeting a week ago Monday. And rather than, you know, talk, I flipped the meeting to let the clubs talk about themselves. And I just let everybody who is in their planning phase talk about what they're planning this year and had a really healthy exchange of, of ideas. Uh, if anybody's interested in the video, I can share it. But uh, a lot of clubs are uh, using that food aspect and uh, actually, you know, uh, ones that can have kitchens, the very few that have kitchens that are working, the guys are preparing food for people to pick up or they're arranging for their meetings, uh, you know, to have their brunch meetings, but the guys can come and pick up packaged food at the uh, at the synagogue from, you know, their bagels and everything put together for them. They can pick it up and then go home and have the Zoom meeting to uh, to join in. So there's all different uh, configurations. I know that in uh, just because my mother-in-law lives in Cherry Hill at Mark Cohen's club in uh, at Temple Beth Shalom in Cherry Hill, they're doing a, a men's club barbecue this weekend. Lord. And uh, they're serving the community. They're barbecuing outside the synagogue and, uh, and yes! having people come, yes, and, yes, yes, come yes! and pick it up. So uh, there's a lot of clubs that are keeping going with that, that uh, you know, and actually doing some money-making operations. Our club does an annual uh, electronics recycling uh, event where we get a, a company, a local company that does uh, environmentally responsible electronics recycling. They bring a big truck to our parking lot and people drop their stuff off, their old TVs, their old computers, everything. We ask for a little donation when we do that. And that's that kind of event uh, um, lends itself to social distancing. People can just drive their car up, drop off their stuff, and and somebody loads it in the truck. It's an idea, Bob. That could be done for just about any, you know, shredding. You have a shredding party, too. Yeah. Well, okay. we, this is a, this is Scott Fowler. I'm a, I'm a VP for activities here at B'nai Amuna in St. Louis uh, with Kevin Litt. Um, and uh, we've been talking about the, uh, you know, what, what activities we can do. And uh, you have a lot of, uh, you know, skittish folks, you know, in terms of coming back together. Uh, we are still in that mode of, of being Zoom. Uh, centric and um, we're actually looking at a uh, uh, virtual escape rooms uh, is, is one of the topics we're going to be uh, discussing with our uh, our planning committee here on Thursday is to uh, see if we could do a, a, an escape room online uh, as opposed to uh, being being <laughs> too close to each other in a small room I've seen those all over Facebook they've been talking about those yep Good idea. One of our clubs in uh, Toronto, Bruce Martin's club, is doing a virtual scotch tasting and dinner catered by the synagogue uh, caterer. And it's going to have like a real fancy dinner you can pick up from the synagogue or have it delivered. Uh, it's going to include multiple bottles of scotch. It's being uh, put on with Highland Park. In Toronto, and uh, they're hoping to have uh, a good turnout, and then have the virtual uh, discussions going on over the tastings. Excellent, Mario Rodriguez. Thank you. Uh, I've been patiently waiting here. <laughs> Sorry about that. For some that's reason, okay. you see your hand is up, but I don't see it on the uh, participants list. I apologize. Oh, that's okay. Uh, so the ideas I wanted to share, are, I, don't, I don't think are particularly unique and maybe some of them have already been mentioned in different forms, uh, but just to share them nonetheless, uh, our shul is still closed and it's unfortunately going to remain closed uh, for the time being. Our high holiday services will be 
uh, largely virtual. But as a result, early on in the pandemic, we had to cancel event after event after event, which was very disheartening. Mm. And um, at some point, our, our synagogue leadership said, no more canceling events and tasked us with the, the challenge of converting all of our events, traditional and new events, into virtual events. And that's what we've been working on. So we've made our, uh, our typical happy hour, you know, pub night events, which we would do periodically, we've made them monthly. Um, and it's on Zoom and, you know, people can drink if they want or not. And uh, we're about to add themes to that, like joke night and what have you. We just had one last weekend and we did a watch party uh, for the lightning game and uh, not the, not the five overtime one, the other one. <laughs> and uh, it, the, the video part of it, we did sh a screen share on zoom with the game and this in the shared window. And for whatever reasons, it was time delayed. Um, so we kind of abandoned that and people were just watching at home on their TVs, but at the same time on zoom. So you could see people's expressions and, and so forth. So that went pretty well. We're also doing our Hearing Men's Voices uh, program monthly now, and, and that was something that we did fairly infrequently in the past. Um, and it's gone well, so much so that people, uh, it came up recently uh, to have open H uh, HMV sessions where there is no specific predetermined topic and people can come in with their own topics and then whoever's facilitating can kind of you know, guide the discussion based on whatever uh, they think might be a, a good topic to go with. Um, the bourbon or scotch tasting we're hoping to do in the spring. We have a, a, a event like that that we do every year. I don't know if any of you are cigar smokers, but uh, David off of Geneva, a uh, you know, popular cigar, high-end cigar brand, they actually have a store here in Tampa, believe it or not. <laughs> and uh, we've been having a private event there for the past couple of years. It's very, very popular. So we're hoping to do that uh, virtually and like somebody else mentioned, do small bottles of samples. Similarly, we're doing, uh, we've been doing a craft beer tasting and brewery tour um, the past few years, which is also very popular. And uh, we're converting that into virtual. We're gonna be working with one of the local breweries. Uh, we're, we're hoping to get this off uh, in October. Um, where we'll get a selection of six of their beers, bottled or canned beers. So it's only breweries that, that actually bottle or can their beers and put it in a six pack, you know, carton for people to come by shul, pick up their six pack and then go home and at the designated hour, do a Zoom beer tasting and we'll have the brewmaster from the, uh, from the brewery talk a little bit about the brewing process and so on and so forth. Um, we've joined with Sisterhood recently and hopefully we'll do some more and I've heard some great suggestions tonight, so thank you. Uh, we're doing a virtual bingo night um, at the end of the month. There's a, a number of, of really great websites that are very well done. Uh, some of our Havurot or one of our Havurot, uh, Havuras actually did it and was apparently went very well. So we're gonna do that as a joint event with Sisterhood. Um, so hey, those are the bingo of, actually will work pretty well for you guys. The what, what will? The bingo, the bingo is a lot of fun. There, there's, I, I, I did that with our synagogue. It was really cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had scavenger hunts and trivia night. Um, I'd love to do an outdoor event. I love the idea of putting up a screen with a projector to watch a game. It's just too hot here. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think people would tolerate the humidity and the the temperature. <laughs> Where are you located? Uh, we're in Tampa, Florida. At Congregation Kol Ami. Okay, so we have, we're in Arizona, so it's 112 <laughs> degrees here today. So there you go. <laughs> Indoors. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll, I'll, I'll say some things. Please. Um, well, I'm, I'm, we're in Chandler, Arizona, Temple Beth Shalom of the East Valley. And our men's club hasn't done a lot of anything from January even until now just because – of all this, we may have been one or one activity, one or actually we had a lecture in January, so that we had some one of our friends come and and speak. And so I've been doing on Zoom more synagogue events like um, like the bingo. We did the bingo. We had a, uh, uh, somebody come and sing and give us a concert. Sam Glazer for the rabbi's birthday, he sang two songs and surprised the rabbi. It was kind of cool, you know. Um, I did show a movie on, on Zoom. It wore out 
fairly well as long as the movie was on my computer it was fine and there was not even a one one or two watched it on youtube but they didn't have to but you know so it's, we did a trivia thing what would be great is if is if we had some of these websites for for doing some of these zoom activities because i had to google and find things and play around with digging up like a trip i found a trivia website i I found a website that does bingo where it generates the card for the person or they can print them off if you give them the link or something like that, you know, and things like that. We did that with our Sunday school too, so. What I can do with uh, everyone's permission, I can send out an email uh, with open, you know, open meaning that everybody will see each other's email address. If you don't want your email address included, because I do have it because I, you, you know, you register, so please send me, you can send me a private chat if you want, and I will not include your email. If I don't hear from you, I'm going to include everyone's email address, and then I'm going to ask people to share information like websites and things like that, that we could all use, okay? So again, if you don't want your email given out to other people, please notify me by chat, like right now, <laughs> because I don't know how much longer we're doing this. So you got to tell me Thanks. I don't hear from you, your, your email's going out to everybody. I, assure, I can assure you it will not be used for commercial purposes. That's good. Anyone else? Okay, well, I want to thank, first of all, all the participants, Scott, for, for kicking this off. I think you did a, everybody did a great job. I'm glad that everybody was open and participating, and we really got some wonderful ideas. I have made up a list, so when I send out that email, probably tomorrow, I will uh, send you the list that I made with names and uh, those who's, if I know your synagogue affiliation, I put it down. If I don't have it, that means I don't know who it is or what it is, I'm sorry. Uh, if you had a great time tonight and you'd like to help out the FJMC, I have sent a, a chat earlier that gave you our a link to, uh, to donate. And we're more than happy to accept whatever donation you'd like to give. Uh, yeah. Again, I thank you. If you have any ideas for other webinars, please write to me at uh, yeah. abudman at fjmc.org, abudman at fjmc.org. And I think Jason wants to say something else. No, no, I, was, I, um, I, I'm, I'm, I've, I actually have a good idea for you. Okay. I'll, I'll send you an email about it. Alan. Do that offline. Anybody else? Like Elliot Alan. has something to say. Oh, please do. Uh, Alan, first off, thank you for putting this together. And I think I heard some great ideas. And I want to commend you guys for being on the call because you know, like Nike says, just do it. Because if we don't do stuff with our clubs, God knows how long this is going to continue. It's really going to hurt our clubs. So thank you for your contribution. We're going to disappear. You're right. Yeah, we got to just do something. Otherwise, we're going to lose everything, you know? So call a couple for you guys are being on. Really, good for yeah, you. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you, Alan, again. My yeah, pleasure. Uh, again, as Alan, I said I, earlier, you guys, you guys who are incoming presidents or new officers, please let us know. We want to help you. Uh, again, my email is abudman at fjmc.org. You can always go on the fjmc.org website. There's lots of ideas there. There are contact, there's contact information if you want to get in touch with us. We're more than happy to help you. We're here to serve you. Thank you all for participating. I appreciate your involvement. And I'm hoping to see you at the, uh, again very soon. Thanks yeah. very much, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Thanks, Alan. Good good night. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Oh, thank you. This was fun. <laughs>